If you're not currently in the workforce, you might think the term networking doesn't apply to you, but my next guest says networking isn't just for the working mom. It's for every mom. It's something we can do in our day-to-day -day lives to help us build that support system we all need, especially as our schedules shift with the upcoming school year. Carly Hazen is a corporate recruiter. She joins us today with ways to network in our neighborhoods. I love this topic. Good yeah, to see you. Good to see you too. So as a working mom yourself, mm -hmm. you understand the benefits both personally and professionally of networking, but give us the campaign. Why should every woman out there be looking at networking as part of her way? Okay because it's important. We <laughs> are not living in a silo. We aren't raising our kids in a vacuum. We all need each other, mm -hmm, right? And mm -hmm. everybody has something to contribute, but building a strong and diverse network is single-handedly one of the most valuable things you can do for your career and your life. Because again, you know, we all integrate our lives and there isn't a stop and a start. Most of us are needing our network and needing our community and needing our tribe on a pretty much daily basis. Mm -hmm. Our kids are totally scheduled, our lives are scheduled. We, we need a support group yeah. for contingency plans and just to kind of make it through a normal day. And statistically, as far as careers are concerned, 70 to 80% of all careers are filled through networking. Really? In fact, LinkedIn, I think just a month or so ago, posted that 85% of all jobs in the filled through networking. Oh, wow. So knowing that yeah. and that, you know, using that network to your advantage is helping people tremendously professionally. Yeah. How can that not stand to reason in mm -hmm. your own personal mm -hmm. lives? Right? We often talk about the village and actually yeah. I host a show on BYU TV called Family Rules dedicated seen to it. family yeah. systems and, and tools. And we did a whole episode dedicated to where's the village. Yeah. And so I think this idea of neighborhood networking, you have to be, I think, a little more proactive these days. People are really comfortable in their bubbles. Yep. So I think there's this press to, if you want want a village, you've got to build one. You've got to build one. And, you know, spending time developing and nurturing and maintaining a network really at the end of the day gives you access to a vast body of knowledge and information and ideas. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so critical because think of how many times you need something. And again, this is a misconception with networking is that no one likes it. Well, <laughs> we only a, use it when we have to. But it's a means to an end. It's a like, means to an I end. I use it to get something. I need a job. I have a network. Yeah. Right? I'm new to the area. We need a community. I'll network. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's just not the case. And plus, people can feel if it's not genuine. And totally. if it's disingenuous and if you only need them for a favor. I think, you know, we got very isolated during the pandemic. And now people are really realizing not only how much we need each other, but how much we need the access to knowledge and information. So mm -hmm. you picture not only tens, but maybe hundreds of people that at any given time, you can reach out to if you're trying to make a critical decision, mm -hmm, right? Whether mm -hmm. that's career oriented or family oriented and your kids need something, a physical therapist or, um, you know, something as far as school and as easy as a carpool, when you need something, it's there for you yeah. and you can reach out to that network. And the interesting component is that is that the more you utilize a network for what it's there for, the more you feel participatory in the network yes. and being able to exchange ideas and information and knowledge with those that come to you, you become the advice giver, you become the connector. I honestly think one of the greatest compliments you can give someone is that they're a great connector mm. because you're someone that says, if I can't solve your problem and yeah. if I can't get you what you need, I'm going to do my best to try to connect you with someone who could within conduit. my network. Mm -hmm. and, and that network just builds and everyone you're connected to, you then become connected to them. And it's kind of a beautiful thing. I love it. Case made. Case okay, made. Great, great. Let's talk about how to network within our neighborhood. You said the first thing we can access is the power of social media. It is. And I think, again, you know, in the digital age that we're all in, you do need to use social media to your advantage. So professionally, that is LinkedIn. And personally, it's all of the usual suspects, right? Facebook and Instagram. But I think it's using it to your advantage in a way that is really, truly engaging and, and very sin supportive sincere. and sincere. Yeah. And I try to find opportunities for warm engagement regularly, but sometimes you have to be really intentional about it. Maybe find 30 minutes a week where you're not just like doom scrolling, but you're really engaging. You're taking a moment to like congratulate a friend on her daughter's graduation. You're congratulating yeah. someone who recently got married or sending a card. I remember in May when we got all those graduation announcements, I kept thinking I need to set 30 minutes and like send some mm -hmm. cards to my friends and their kids congratulating them. When you're intentional about it and do it, it really it feels good. It feels like, you know, something right. you're checking off your list. But again, it feels like should you need that person or should you need to ask for a favor? It, they're more than happy to comply. There's been a stroke. There's a relationship. That's right. There. I love that challenge. Be purposeful about it and sit down for five to ten minutes even and say, yeah. how can I connect how just with I, my comments? How can I meaningfully engage yes. and connect and support?
we, you want us to build bonds with our existing friends. I think that's the easiest route, right? Yeah. Is, you know, start with your friends and family, start where it's warm and easy and make sure that you've got, you know, recent connections made, right? And that people understand that you're there and you support them and you're following their lives in some, you know, mm -hmm. form or fashion. Mm -hmm. Then asking kind of to have that build, mm -hmm. you know, do you know someone that could connect me with this? Or, you know, I've got a child who's looking for their first job. Do you know anybody out there? Mm -hmm. You know, quick mm -hmm. ways to make summer money, something like that I find. And I love it when friends will ask me for that or advice on a resume, because sure. I know that in the future, I don't feel so bad if I need someone to pick up my kid at four o'clock, you right. know? So I think it's reciprocal. And I think you start with where it's easy, your friends and family, and then feel emboldened to ask for that to grow. How does participating more, Carly, help build that, that system or that network for us? I think participating more builds trust. And I think um, the knowledge that, again, if someone were to maybe refer you to a valuable member of their connection, that uh -huh. you're someone who follows through mm. because you're an active participant. Mm. They see it. They see you living this. They see you um, willing to engage and connect. And the best networkers I know, just, you know, we should put this out there, aren't the smartest people in the room, they're not walking around with all the information. They're not always the most witty or sparkling conversation. It's people just willing to engage. It's mm. almost like a level of natural curiosity that you mm. have with the way that the world works around you and a genuine curiosity about people. And yeah. people can tell that. Mm -hmm. So if participating with people in a very genuine and daily and active way. Mm -hmm. um, it's just an easier means to an end if you look at it that way. We stay in touch, which you just described perfectly, mm -hmm. kind of that constant connection. So it does feel genuine when the time comes. And, and you have to share in this, in this relationship as well. You have to give, not just take. You do. You need to give. You need to share information knowledge. I, I've found, you know, some of my greatest relationships comes from friends who maybe go to like a school zoning meeting or like back to school. And if you can't make it, they're willing to like download and share those notes. Mm -hmm. I think that's just that fluid exchange of information is so valuable. We mm -hmm. can't be everywhere at once. And so being able to touch base with someone and in five to 10 minutes, you get tons of necessary, vital yeah. information, knowledge that you can then pass on to others, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. also maybe weren't able to make that meeting I think is critical. And I love that you accentuated the idea of sharing our time. So a lot of this just takes a slower pace, like a thoughtful, intentional slow down. Yeah. And recognizing that you're someone that maybe has that valuable knowledge and information. Yeah. I think early in your career, you are you're, you're kind of needy and you're codependent and you're looking for people to advocate for you and open doors for you and get you out there. You realize sooner than you believe it will happen, that you're now the person mm -hmm. who can open that door mm -hmm. and extend that hand and advocate for someone. And I think that's really, you know, pretty rewarding to be yeah. able to realize that like, look at, you know, I got where I am because look at all the people who helped me and now I just pay it forward. I love this. I love this charge. Thank you so much, yeah, Carly. Good. We appreciate it. Great advice.